the relentless heat of a summer day in London bore down upon the bustling streets, casting a haze over the cityscape. Megan stood by the window, feeling the stifling warmth seep through the glass panes. It was an unusually hot July day, and the air felt heavy with humidity. Drawing the curtain shut to block out the glaring sunlight, Megan turned away from the window and sighed in frustration. The oppressive heat seemed to match her own simmering irritation, adding to her already mounting sense of discomfort. With a heavy heart, she made her way back to her mother's room. The sight of her mother lying in bed, her face pale against the crisp white sheets, only served to deepen Megan's unease. Her mother's breathing was shallow and labored, a stark reminder of her fragile condition. I'm not going, Megan declared defiantly, taking her mother's hand in hers. You can't send me away. Her mother's response was gentle but firm, her voice barely above a whisper. It's only for a month, my darling. She reassured Megan. Just until I feel a little better. Then you can come home. Dr. Barnes, the family physician, stood nearby, his brow furrowed with concern. Has Megan got any friends? He inquired, casting a glance towards Mrs. Brown, the home help. Mrs. Brown shook her head solemnly. Megan doesn't have any friends, she whispered softly. She's a strange child. The truth hung heavy in the air. Megan had struggled to make friends since the family's recent move to London, and her new school had proven to be a source of torment rather than companionship. Dr. Barnes adjusted his glasses, his expression troubled. Your mother is very unwell, Megan, he explained gently. She needs to rest, and you can't stay here for the summer holidays. Megan's heart sank at the thought of being separated from her mother, especially at a time when she needed her the most. But despite her protests, Dr. Barnes insisted that it was for the best, and Megan found herself reluctantly agreeing to his decision. A Journey to the Highlands As Megan watched the cityscape blur pass from the window of the train, she couldn't shake the sense of apprehension that gnawed at her insides. Leaving behind the familiar sights and sounds of London felt like stepping into the unknown, and she couldn't help but feel a pang of anxiety at the thought of what lay ahead. The journey to the highlands of Scotland was long and arduous, the train rattling along the tracks as it made its way through the picturesque countryside. Megan found herself lost in thought, her mind wandering back to her mother and the uncertain future that awaited them both. When they finally arrived at their destination, Megan felt a mixture of relief and trepidation. The quaint charm of the Scottish countryside was a stark contrast to the bustling streets of London, and she couldn't help but feel a sense of displacement amidst the serene beauty that surrounded her. Uncle Fraser, her mother's brother, greeted them warmly at the station, his smile reassuring amidst Megan's inner turmoil. As they made their way to White Heather Cottage, Uncle Fraser's humble abode nestled amidst rolling hills and verdant fields, Megan couldn't help but marvel at the tranquility of their surroundings. Inside the cottage, Megan was greeted by a sense of warmth and coziness that belied its modest exterior. 
The absence of modern amenities like electricity and television only served to highlight the simplicity of country living, a stark contrast to the hustle and bustle of city life. As the days turned into weeks, Megan found herself reluctantly adjusting to life in the Highlands. Uncle Fraser's patient guidance and unwavering support helped ease her transition, while the breathtaking beauty of the natural landscape offered a welcome distraction from her homesickness. A brush with magic. One evening, as Megan stood by the sea, gazing out at the vast expanse of water that stretched before her, she caught sight of a majestic white horse galloping along the shoreline. Its silvery mane glimmered in the moonlight, and for a moment, Megan felt as though she had stumbled upon a scene from a fairy tale. Uncle Fraser, look! There's a white horse! Megan exclaimed, her voice filled with excitement as she pointed towards the shore. Uncle Fraser followed her gaze, his expression thoughtful. Perhaps it's Kendra, he mused, his voice tinged with nostalgia. Kendra? Megan echoed, intrigued by the unfamiliar name. It's an old legend, Uncle Fraser explained, his eyes distant with memory. They say that Kendra was the last unicorn, a creature of magic and wonder. Some believe that he still roams these lands, appearing only to those in need. Megan listened intently, her imagination ignited by the possibility of encountering such a mythical creature. But even as she entertained the notion of a world filled with magic and wonder, the harsh reality of her mother's illness lingered in the back of her mind. Days turned into weeks, and Megan found herself embracing life in the Highlands with a newfound sense of purpose and gratitude. But beneath the surface, a sense of unease continued to nod her insides, a constant reminder of the uncertainty that lay ahead. Then, one fateful evening, as Megan and Uncle Fraser gathered around a crackling fire on the beach, the mythical white horse made another appearance. Its luminous form glided effortlessly across the sand, its presence filling Megan with a sense of awe and wonder. It's Kendra. Megan cried her heart racing with exhilaration as she raced towards the shore. But this time, she was not alone. Ben, a newfound friend and confidant, followed close behind, his presence offering a reassuring anchor in the midst of uncertainty. As they approached the horse, its majestic presence filled them with a sense of awe and wonder. With trembling hands, Megan reached out to touch its velvety nose, feeling a surge of energy course through her veins. And then, in a moment of clarity, she made a wish, a wish for her mother's recovery, for an end to her suffering, for the chance to be reunited.